Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Purpose Driven Life Sports, and I'm back here for another NBA video. So, last night, NBA Finals Game 1, Raptors won 118 to 109, beating the Warriors by 9 points. Now, to me, at different points in that game, uh, Toronto probably could have went up by at least 15, maybe 20, just because Golden State, to me, wasn't getting the shots that they wanted. They were turning the ball over a lot. They had, like, 16 turnovers. So, Golden State wasn't really taking care of the ball. And in the first in the first game in what was like nine days, they just looked off. They looked a little uh, out of sync. It seemed at times, even though Steph Curry did have a great start in the first quarter, he had eleven points. But after that, it seemed uh, sort of like a struggle for him to get going. And to me, in the second half, you really saw he didn't really have a rhythm because he wasn't getting a lot of shots off. He wasn't getting the type of looks that he was getting in the first half. Because as when the second quarter started. Marcus Gasol and the Raptors, as soon as Steph Curry came off a pick and roll with Draymond Green, as soon as he came off the pick, they were really they were right there to trap him. And Steph Curry got turned the ball over quite a few times just doing that. So they did an excellent job to me in terms of making sure that Steph Curry and Draymond Green didn't get their pick and roll game going. Because if that gets going, to me, that's how the Warriors' offense really starts clicking. So that was one way that. Toronto really executed and really kind of controlled the game from that point. Another way is that Pascal Siakam, which is the big story, had 32 points, had eight rebounds, five assists, two blocks, a steal, played excellent defense on the perimeter on Klay Thompson. And just his overall play, him getting buckets, shooting 14 of 17, that steady presence is something that Toronto's going to need because just like last night, I, I believe in many games because Golden State probably might win in five or six now. I think five or six is probably going to be my prediction. Kawhi Leonard's probably not going to have really big nights. I think he'll have one big game, and he might get them a game, another game, but I don't think he's going to have big games because what Golden State's doing is they're trapping him like they did Damian Lillard and making sure he's getting the ball out. And Golden State's rotations, like I said, because they are they were kind of slow, they seemed a little sluggish, the rotations were really slow, so getting to open shooters and making sure the rotations were there at the basket – was to me another big problem that Toronto was able to capitalize on. Also, in terms of rotations, what Toronto made sure was was that if they got switched on to a smaller guard because they like to run the pick and roll and Golden State likes to switch, to me, Golden State should should only switch on certain matchups because getting Steph Curry on a Marc Gasol is a big problem because then you have to overhelp and then somebody else is going to back cut. There's open shooter. You see, the implications of help and just uh, all this switching, it, it kind of... It, that's why, to me, switching should only be on certain matchups because even though this we, this league is a switch league now where everybody's a lot more longer and they're more athletic, it, it to me, it causes too many mismatches because, you know, centers like a Marcus Gasol, he kind of just waits for that little that screen and roll game where he gets a matchup and he just feasts. And a lot of times, last night, he was just feasting on those open matchups. He had 20 points, 7 rebounds. He was, to me, another big key. And even though Kawhi Leonard had 23 points and uh, I think it was 7 rebounds and 5 assists, he it, it's not a bad game, but he only shot 5 of 14 from the field. And if you're going to state, you take that, and I think that's what they're going to continue to do. They're going to allow... They're going to make sure that he gets his looks, but they're going to be contested. That's, to me, that Golden State's defense on him was great last night. But on everybody else, it's got to improve. The rotation's got to be there closing out on open shooters. That's got to happen in this in this series because if that doesn't happen, we talk about how Toronto does miss a lot of shots. But to me, Fred Van Fleet is a guy that you don't want to leave open, and he's really in a, he's really in the flow right now. Uh, now back to Golden State. I talked about the rotations being slow. They didn't seem to have a rhythm all night, especially when you I think they only had what what twenty nineteen points in the first quarter. So for me, I think this year is going to be great for them because now they know that you now now they're back into the flow. They know what they need to do. Kevin Durant's not going to play game two, but to me, it's not a big issue. I think he'll be back for game three. That that to me was my big prediction because to me. Just because he flew to Toronto doesn't mean he was going to play game two. I think his calf, everybody keeps thinking that's worse than it is. I don't think it is. It's just that he doesn't, it's, I don't think he really had a calf injury, but I, it's it's something that you don't want to uh, overwork at first because, like Steve Kerr said, once you, if you re-injure it, he's gone for the rest of the series. Like, th there's no coming back, so. 
I like how they're taking it, you know, uh, day by day. And to me, what I really like about this Golden State Warriors team, which is why I haven't lost confidence, is that they haven't lost confidence in themselves. They keep. I think they should stop preaching that they need Kevin Durant to win a championship. They they just really need to be playing together, and they got to get back into the flow, which is just moving the ball, uh, and really taking advantage of what Toronto's doing. If they're going to trap on the pick and roll, then Steph Curry has to recognize that sooner, which he is. But he's got to stop throwing those weird over the shoulder passes. The, those kind of passes are to me unnecessary even though he does to me the majority of the time they get through but many times a Marcus Saul who is 7-1 has long arms is going to be able to get his arms up there and just kind of deflect that and it's going to be a turnover and steal also Golden State's transition defense has got to get better which was another big story I believe uh, Toronto had like what 24 plus transition points because Golden State's defense because when you're getting back into the flow it's all about communication to me and getting when you see it doesn't matter if two guys run to the open man you've got to get to somebody if they're open and you got to match up and transition so that's got to that's going to be one thing that they have to uh correct too steph had i think it was 33 points clay had 21 those guys got to get to me more shots to get in a rhythm because if those guys get off in the series then the series is over uh, like I said, Pascal Siakam doing a great job on Clay, but they have to make sure that Clay is still getting looks. Clay is getting uh, mid-range shots, and Clay getting shots off the dribble. It's just, it's just to me, it's all flow. Golden State had not played in nine days. You can't simulate game. You can't simulate game like experience. You just you have to you have, you have to play and you got to get back into it. I like how, uh, like I said, they're going to bring Demarcus Cousins off the bench. It was a great move. He's got to. He's just got to play. He just got to play. I think you got to play him 16 minutes, though. I think you got to play him at least 16 minutes a game because he's got to get uh, more shots up. And one one cool pass I saw was him. He was blinded, but he knew where a guy was, so he just kind of flipped it. It was, it was a pretty cool pass. But this game, no matter what I say, even though Golden State has to make adjustments, they got to get back to the flow, just keep playing. It was a really entertaining game. As much as the distance was between Golden State and Toronto all night, which to me was between uh, 9 to 12 points most of the night, Golden State wasn't going to allow them to run away. That's what I, that, I think people were kind of getting carried away saying that they're worried about Golden State. Just cut the noise, just seriously, because you would need to be worried if Golden State got blown out by 30, which is not going to happen. <clears throat> it's all about the timing is not there, the flow is not there. And to me, for Golden State, it just takes one game for them to correct what they need to do, uh, get their rotations corrected. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this because, to me, it's not a big, it's not, it's not as big of an issue as I made it out to be last night when I was frustrated after the game. Uh, the referees in this game, I would give them uh, a C minus because, especially in the first half, I saw multiple plays, especially in a row, where Golden State on offense was getting a lot of no calls on pretty much calls that you could see that should have been fouled. Steph Curry on multiple layup shots was getting hammered. Was It, it, it was kind of getting ridiculous. I remember one and one play where, where Kawhi Leonard just got an and one when he bowled over Stephen Curry. That that was actually, that's a charge because Steph Curry was not only not in a restricted area, he was there before Kawhi Leonard got there and established his position. He didn't understand that call. And then, and then on the next play, I'm pretty sure that Kyle Lowry got the same. He got a charge on Draymond Green when he barely took the brunt of a hit. So I don't, I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna say it's a conspiracy, but uh, I, I like, I like to see more consistent refer, refereeing because a lot of these calls were pretty ridiculous last night. And I'm gonna say that there were calls on the other end for Toronto that were ridiculous. That one steal that got Clay a dunk. I think that was a kick ball by Demarcus Cousins. So. Got to get that corrected. It's just multiple things that that refereeing, but to me they didn't. It w- they didn't really control the outcome of this game. It was just Toronto, just you know, just playing better. Just they weren't phased by the moment, which is incredible. I, I'm really proud of Toronto for not being phased. You know, it's your first finals game. You know, a lot of players would you know be kind of scared, but they just kind of treated it like a normal game. I think Golden State did too. They just like I'm just gonna keep saying they got to get in the flow. They got to get back to what they do. So. Uh, this is going to do it for my breakdown of the finals game one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. So, uh, before I make another, before my next video on the Warriors and finals game, my prediction is Golden State will win game two. I, I, I have confidence in them. I think they're going to respond and bounce back. 
to me, they're just too, they've just been too battle tested to just kind of falter. And I trust them. And to me, before I go to again, Draymond Green didn't have a great game scoring, even though he had a triple double, 10 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. If to me, if he's making, if he goes five for 10, it's a totally different game. And I tell you this because if he's aggressive scoring, if he's getting his looks, he's making layups. If he's, you know, if he's just five for 10, that's a big difference because it's efficiency. And I think that helps them in terms of then what Toronto can't do is they can't discount Draymond Green's impact. Also, Andre Goodell's got to knock down his open shots. Airballing is not cool. I saw him airball that one three. I did laugh really hard, but it's at the same time, it's like when you're open to help out the Warriors help out Stephen Clay, you have to be a threat to to the Toronto Raptors like he was in Houston in the Houston series he was he was a threat. In the Clippers series he was a threat. In the in the Portland series he was a threat. They gotta go back to that. Him and Steph, I think they're an underrated pick and roll partner, especially him slipping to the basket. So that's gotta get corrected. Uh they gotta get Kavon Looney more touches. I think he's an underrated part of what they do. And also get more touches to DeMarcus Suns on the block. Let him go one-on-one. Let him get his game established. If if he's doing that, then this Golden State, this Golden State team is going to be a problem for Toronto. you got to get more touches to DeMarcus. Because if he's down on the block, he's getting his touches, especially with the second unit, boy. Then him holding down that second unit is going to be big. i, I got to say that right now. That's going to be huge. So. Once again, thank you guys for listening. This is my breakdown and analysis on game one of the NBA Finals. I will see you guys in my next video.